When you see it in the sky, it looks round, but the moon is more of an oval shape, similar to a lemon. This shape, flattened with a bulge on each side, came out billions of years ago when extremely hot tidal forces shaped its crust. They heated up some regions more than others. Gravity from our planet has helped to exaggerate this lemon shape over time. When they were getting ready to send missions to the moon, some researchers were worried because there was a thick layer of dust on the lunar surface. They were afraid seas of dust were both soft and thick enough to swallow their lunar lander. But even though the surface there is dusty, this layer is just too thin to cause complications. Our moon certainly isn't the biggest one in the solar system. The champion here is Ganymede, one of the 79 moons circling around Jupiter. But our moon is the largest in relation to its parent planet. It has a diameter of more than 2,000 miles, which is slightly bigger than the quarter of the size of the Earth. Pluto, for instance, has a smaller moon to planet ratio. Its biggest moon, Charon, is almost the size of Pluto, which is why it looks like a double dwarf planet system. How long would a walk around the moon take you? When the Apollo astronauts were there, they managed a walking speed of approximately 1.3 miles per hour. On average, you walk twice as fast down on Earth. The low gravitational force on the moon would give you significantly less traction on the ground. But those special spacesuits astronauts were wearing were never actually designed for long-distance hikes. In theory, you could maybe reach the speed of 3 miles per hour before you'd need to break into a run. At this pace, you travel 6,770 miles, which means making a circle around the moon in 91 days if you're walking non-stop. Why does the moon change its shape? It goes through different phases each month, starting from the new moon and gradually going to the full moon, just to do the same thing all over again, but in reverse. The sunlight hits one half of the moon at a time. This gives it a night and a day side, just like we have it here on Earth. The shape we see the moon in depends on where it's located compared to the sun. If it's directly between us and the sun, the sunlight only hits the side we don't see. That's a new moon. It appears completely dark in that phase. But when it comes to the far side of our planet from the sun, its day side completely faces the Earth. That's when we see a full moon. After the initial phase, when the moon is new, we'll see more of its surface in the sky as it orbits our planet. It's something we call waxing. The moon in this phase first becomes a crescent. The first quarter moon is when it's half full. After that, it goes into a gibbous moon phase, when it's larger than half full, but not yet full. After it reaches the full moon phase, it slowly shrinks and goes through the same phases but in the opposite direction. While up on the moon, you'd probably see human footprints there. True, no one has stepped there since the last Apollo mission in 1972. And the footsteps may stay there for many years because there's no geological activities on the moon, like earthquakes or volcanoes. There are no winds, rain, or other things that could erase these footprints. How would you get to the moon? Rockets are probably the first thing that comes to your mind. But a lunar elevator could be an even better solution because traveling in a rocket would be a difficult, expensive, and pretty dangerous way to try to reach the lunar surface. Why would people want to go there? It's not just about craters, an amazing view of our home planet, or other unique things the moon offers. It's also full of resources like a rare form of helium. Humans could use it in fusion power stations on Earth. We could extract some other rare elements too, and use them for smartphones and other gadgets. For a lunar elevator, we need to stretch a cable anchored to the moon's surface for 250,000 miles towards the Earth. We wouldn't be able to attach it directly to our planet because both Earth and the moon are moving. But we could terminate high in our planet's orbit. We'd have solar-powered robotic shuttles that would move up and down the cable. This is like having a conveyor belt to ferry rare and precious resources our way. The cable would be as thick as a pencil and would weigh 40 tons. It sounds expensive, but a lunar elevator would most likely pay for itself within only 53 trips. The moon is in constant motion, 
It rotates on its axis and circles around the Earth, and it makes the same amount of time for the Moon to make a circle around the Earth and rotate once on its axis, compared to our planet, which rotates on its axis every 24 hours, and makes a full circle around the Sun in 365 days. So, the Moon is tidally locked to our planet, which is why we always see the same side of the Moon. One theory says the Moon probably formed when a large Mars-sized object from our solar system hit the Earth. They collided 4.5 billion years ago when the solar system was still in its early stage, which was pretty chaotic. If this theory is correct, around 60% of the Moon is made of lighter elements that are also present in the outer layer of our planet. A lucky set of circumstances lets us see total solar eclipses from our planet. The Moon is the perfect size and distance from the Earth to appear the same size as the Sun when we're looking at it in the sky. When the Moon passes between the Sun and us, it covers the Sun perfectly. Plus, you can see an impressive halo that illuminates its edges. If it were any farther from us or smaller, a solar eclipse would only look like there's a blot on the Sun. Our Moon contains the water that kinda jumps around. There's water there locked up in ice. Some water molecules move around the surface as the Moon cools and warms during the day. The water gets stuck on its surface until the lunar midday, when the Sun is above the upper branch of any of the Moon's meridians. At this point, some of the water melts, heats up, and ends up in the delicate lunar atmosphere. Its atmosphere generally contains some unusual gases, including potassium and sodium. Venus, Mars, and Earth don't have these in their atmospheres, so the water stays and floats there until it gets to a cooler area. Then it settles back to the surface. There's a specific anomaly under the surface of the south pole of the Moon, a giant and extremely dense blob of metal lodged in the mantle. And, most likely, it's altering the Moon's gravitational field. No one knows how such a huge blob of metal ended up trapped under the lunar surface, it could perhaps be remnants of the iron-nickel asteroid. Four billion years ago, this asteroid crashed into the far side of the lunar surface and created this enormous South Pole Aitken crater. Our natural satellite is shrinking. Its interior is cooling, which results in the Moon getting over 150 feet skinnier just as a grape wrinkles as it's shrinking down. But a grape has flexible skin and the lunar surface crust is brittle. That's why it breaks as the Moon is getting smaller. That way, it forms thrust faults. One section of crust pushes over the closest part. This has been going on for the past few hundred million years. These lunar faults are still active. They probably produce moonquakes as the Moon gradually shrinks and cools all the time. Some of these quakes are strong, maybe 5 on the Richter scale. During their orbit around the Moon, astronauts took images of Ina, a quite unusual volcanic deposit. Ina is not that old. It might have been formed somewhere between 3.5 and 1 billion years ago. The volcanoes on the Moon were probably active during the age of dinosaurs. If only they could have invented telescopes! They'd probably have a magnificent view of lava oozing from the lunar surface from time to time. The Moon has its own time zone called Lunar Standard Time. It doesn't correspond with the time on our planet. A year on the Moon lasts 12 days. Each day is about as long as a month on Earth. These days got their names after astronauts who walked on the Moon. The days are divided into 30 cycles. The cycles are divided into hours, minutes, and seconds. The calendar started when Neil Armstrong set his foot on the Moon on July 21, 1969.